Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back. So this is more of a serious video. I just want to be, um, I don't know, I, I think as concise but also as detailed as possible. So there's probably no way I can make this video r really, really short. But if you're someone that really, really cares about the game, then obviously um, feel free to stay and watch. And if you're one of the developers that I shared on the forums that um, happened to come across this video, then I definitely encourage you to watch because this is my main intent. I want to share a lot of the opinions, not my opinions, but also the a lot of the opinions of my viewers and a lot of my um, guildies that have like actually really really serious people that are playing the game um, have that have like certain problems with the game so I've noticed the main reason I'm making this is because I'm feeling a little bit panicky like I I've had a lot of people go inactive in my guild and they were people that were like really really competitive just like one week ago and they basically all of a sudden just quit the game um, and I think the main reason is they they noticed that their efforts aren't really rewarded there's no um, there's no real reward in you, in you pushing yourself and making sure you never miss a, si never waste a single dagger, never waste any sort of resource in the game. You know, being active every single day, like being just super com competitive, um, always online for guild battle times. There's no, no incentive for that anymore. Um, they've noticed that, and I, I've also noticed that. But I'm, I'm. I for me, I'm actually pretty okay. I, I don't care that much. Like, I, I'm still having tons and tons of fun in the game. Um, you know, thank you very much, NCSoft. Like, this this game has been very, very enjoyable. And it's so far, so far, so good. But there are a few problems. Like, huge, huge problems that are, um, I think, will maybe eventually affect the longevity of the game. And these these are problems that I think are already affecting a lot of players. Maybe not the majority of players, but definitely a lot of the players at the top. Um, if you haven't seen, there was a forum post a while ago. I don't know if anyone like actually looks at the forums and stuff, but there was a, I think the guild leader of Chaos, and Chaos is like the number one guild in the game. Um, he he quit the game basically. He just he he stopped playing and he. He was like, it just, it doesn't, it, there's nothing for him to do, basically. But I think at that point, it's, you know, if, if you're, if you're already, already so far up in the game, um, and the only players that you're playing against are like the super, super hardcore whales that have like a full six-star team, then um, I guess that's reasonable. But a lot of players in my guild, like just um, active players, people that are really, really serious, have also. Um, quit the game as well. Just just a week ago, they were super super active, um, and this this is a worrying this is a worrying thing for me. It's just it it makes me fear for the for the longevity of um, of lineage red knights. So hopefully, I can as a as a player who has been actively playing, and also as a player who is um, I think near one of the one of the top players, like I'm always at least top 100. Um, our guild is also always finishes at least top three every single week. So I think I'm one of the more competitive players in the game. Um, I hope to offer some insights. Also, another advantage that I do have is I'm also a YouTuber, so I've been hearing a lot of opinions, a lot of comments that people have been leaving me, um, and a lot of there are a lot of discussions that um, through through my Discord channel as well um, when we when we talk about the game and stuff. So I've been I've been able to hear a lot of the opinions that people that players of the game had. Um, so hopefully you. Um, if you're if you're someone that has any any say in the development of the game, um, you take my you take these what I what I'm about to say um, you know somewhat seriously. So I think the the, the game is really well really well made. Like um, just a just probably um, a little bit of praise. I think the game itself is is really good. Like the the gameplay the um, the gameplay system, like when you're actually going to battle, how you have a frontliner, how you have active skills, you can put in put in like auto or you can do it manual. Um, there's a lot of like you know strategy involved, like planning the synergy of your team, and also the units in the game are also very very unique. Um, I think overall, just the basics of the game is very 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 well made. Um, just like you know. Maybe visuals aren't that important, but I think the visuals are definitely one of the best I've seen in any mobile game um, that I've ever played. If you look at the, like, there's so much detail. Like, if you just, you can just, you can look at the active skills of the the monsters by clicking it while you're, 
while you're inside, you know? This, not a lot of uh, games put so much detail into it. The, the visuals and stuff, like the background of the, the homepage um, for the game is also very, 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 very um, well made. Just, it, it, it creates like a sense of immersion, you know? All, which I didn't think was possible for, for mobile games. Um, and also the system with, with your heroes and pets. This, the system, I think, is also very, very unique. I've played a lot of similar games before, like Summoner's War, um, uh, Soccer Spirits, um, you know, uh, Moss Super League, you know, and Seven Nights. You know, I've, I've tried a lot of those games. I also played a lot of, like, random, like, you know, waifu games, like the Japanese-made ones, like Flower Knight Girl, um, Fate Grand Order, and stuff like that. Um, so I've, I've had a lot of experience with these types of games. Like, the, the visuals of this game is just the best like I've ever seen um, and also the system is is also just like it's super unique it's so, something that is only unique to Linux Red Nice which is really really nice so it's definitely not a copycat of, of any other game it's definitely not a clone um, but there's a lot of problems with the with the progression and how players feel rewarded I think the most important part of any any game like not just mobile games any game is the sense of fulfillment like the sense of um, uh, just I, not not I would I wouldn't say actually not yeah definitely any game like if you're playing like a fighting game like a competitive game then your sense of fulfillment comes from the comes from winning comes from comes from beating the the other team comes from being better than the other team if you're playing um, an MMO or or a game like this then your sense of fulfillment comes from your your progression as you um, get stronger in the game as you get more gear as you collect all these things um, and build yourself up then you 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 feel like you you've achieved something you know and this that's one of the one of the magic magical things about gaming um, but I think there's a there's a there's a problem with the way the game is designed the, the system that the game is designed that forces players to maybe believe that they they aren't getting anywhere you know and eventually at some point quit or their efforts if they're working hard their efforts aren't rewarded and they they eventually quit um, and I think most of that actually has to do with the guild battle system. Like, if they, there's a there's a solution that I, I, I do feel about this, but I'm probably going to talk about all the problems for, first before I talk about a solution. So, the main, the there's there's one um, one major thing that I think separates Linux, like the gameplay system of Linux from other games, is, is the Transmute system. Um, having to go to various maps to collect materials to raise your monster up is really, really, like it just it it creates a different um, dynamic in the game where you have to go to each map and farm for a certain material. Like if I want to want to evolve this monster, then I I have to go to a certain map to to get the emblem of the star and then get um, however many of these before I move to another map and farm this gold ornament and then eventually I have all the materials I need and then I can transmute that monster to the next level. Um, I played a lot of games before, like Summoner's War, like um, you know, Monster Super League. I think those two are the games that I played like really, really seriously. And in those games, you basically you just farm the same map over and over again. If you ever played those games, basically like there's like giants and dragons. If you farm the giant map, the highest level of the giant map, you just farm it over and over again for a certain um, rune or something for your monsters, and you just do that repeatedly you know it's just the same thing repeatedly you can literally I can write a script that does it for me you know automatically and just like I don't have to do anything um, but for this that there's a lot of decision making like I have to I have to actually navigate and, and go through each map I know these are really simple decisions they're not really real decisions but it's it gives you a sense that you're you're actually actively doing something um, that, and that's why I think the transmute system was really, really nice. And one of the reasons why it felt so, so nice in the beginning, it felt, it gave you this uh, sense of uh, achievement every time that you transmute a monster. It feels like you're moving forward. Your team is getting stronger bit by bit. Um, and that kind of has has stopped ever since um, your monsters got to a certain level because. It takes so much to transmute a monster now. Like literally, I get like probably two of these potions a day, and <laughs> I have to have 127 before I can get it to the next level. So it's probably going to take me a month or something like that before I can transmute one of my monsters to gold. And 
this probably if players aren't very patient um, it makes them lose faith like they 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 don't want to they don't want to want to continue on it just like it doesn't give them any sense of achievement like I know I'm still progressing if I get like two potions a day I know at some point I will be able to transmute my monster but I no longer have that feeling of my team growing stronger because every time I get two potions my team doesn't get stronger my team only just is the, still the same and my team doesn't get stronger until a month later where I, where I actually have 127 of each of these potions and I, I transmute my monster um, this I don't think is a is an exact problem of the game. I think this is still an okay design if they decide to fix something else elsewhere. Um, I will go into that a little bit later. But a lot of the the thing is I've um, I found a way to kind of progress in the game in the sense of not re really raising my main team. But I've I've been um, spending a lot of my resources as well. Um, while I'm farming these potions, because these potions are on daily lockout, so I basically use the rest of my daggers to farm for the transmute materials of other monsters that I'm raising. So I'm raising additional units for, for, um, for various reasons, for guild battles, for, for, um, for raids and stuff. So I'm ma ba basically focusing on raids for now. I'm, if you've been following my series, I've been um, raising this dragon and this orc for for raids, making like a full armor break team and stuff. And this is really nice because it also, it means that your team is getting stronger for guild battles. And that in itself gives players a sense of, you know, achievement, it gives a sense sense of progression, you know, that, that I'm moving forward, I'm getting stronger and stuff. But, but there is a huge, huge problem with that as well because the guild battle system is so damn broken in this game that, um, that it completely destroys that. It does. It just doesn't give players any sort of, um, sort of achievement. Like there's no, there's no way for players to, to feel like they're progressing uh, when they're doing guild battles. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit about why. So. The way that guild battle works right now, um, our guild, if we look at map 1, this is where we're doing our fights, we are currently number 6. And how is this number 6 determined? Um, this number 6 is determined by by how many areas you have conquered, basically, every single every single week at the... Well, uh, this ranking, like, or at the moment, I mean, um, this, this ranking is for at the moment, but the only... Um, effect that this ranking has is when the session actually ends at the end of every single week. So what this means is you the, the only thing that matters that puts your guild ahead of everybody else that that determines your rank is is the areas conquered. You only need to have as many areas conquered. This means you want to have as many players, you want to um, actively conquering areas and stuff. But there's also another big big problem with this. And it's that um, players don't have enough units to set as defense. So if I go into any map, if I attack this guy, this this random guild for for some weird reason, like I just decide to hit them, I'm gonna set, a, I'm gonna put a one-man defense party because that's all I can afford to. And you'll see that he all only also has a one-man defense party. I, I didn't choose this slot. I don't know what was in this slot, but I'm gonna guess that. All right, maybe he didn't have a one-man defense party, but maybe these are all, all throwaway monsters. They're like level one monsters that he's not using so uh, it's kind of the same idea most pl players cannot defend whatever area they conquered and what this means is what determines the rank that the rank at the end of every single week is is basically the amount of people you have on your guild like that has stayed up and um, decided at the very very last like five minutes before the session ends to spam all their all their um, guild battle tickets and conquer as many areas as possible and if you have that many players like you know actively doing it everybody actively doing it then obviously you can you can be number one like you can you can have absolute shit monsters and you like you don't have to be able to beat anyone because their most players will only be putting a one-man defense um, I could probably do another one, and and most likely they 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 will have like a one man defense. Um, if I just go to some random guild, I think, and I just put in another one man defense, then they'll probably only have a one man defense. 
and see I was right. So most players are setting one monster as defense. And I think the way that the games, the guild system is is designed is that um, you're, they make it so that eventually at some point you're going to have a lot of monsters to use. But the the main problem is it doesn't even matter. Like it, it, I could put in my secondary team. I can I can not use my main team. Like I can set my main team in one of the fortresses, and if I use like this team for example, like if I use these ten monsters over here, they're they're decent monsters. I've raised them to epic quality plus two, level thirty. But the problem is major the majority of the other players will probably still be able to beat this team. Like probably fifth, maybe not not fifty percent, but like. Or more than 50%. I mean, like maybe 80% of the players will that are playing right now will probably still be able to to beat this team. Um, active players, I think, like that are actively participating in guild battles, will probably still be able to beat this team. Obviously, new players probably aren't participating in guild battles, but the um, the point is the defense and offense system of the guild battles is actually really, really broken because you're not able to set your best teams on defense and they're able to use their best teams as offense meaning that most of the time they're definitely going to be able to beat you it doesn't even matter what you set as defense you're probably going to lose anyways unless it's your very very best team then you know you're you're probably facing then the only people that can beat you are obviously people with better monsters um so what this what this creates is a system where um there's no competitiveness. You basically the only competitive thing about it is you you have to log in at the at the last moment, and um, there's no incentive for me to raise my other monsters. Like the going back to the transmute system as before, there's no incentive for me to increase the overall power of all my monsters because there's no point because I'll still lose my my defenses anyways. Um, so. What what this what this makes me think is like the the system is just it's broken. Like I don't know how they they can fix it if they can maybe make it make it give the defense party some sort of edge, some sort of advantage. Maybe like um, on the defense party, you are able to use um, you know like fifteen monsters or something like that. Maybe maybe that will that will give the defense party some sort of edge that. They actually have a chance to win against the offensive party, um, or or else there's no point. Like I could use my, I could set my secondary team. Like if I don't use just my main monsters, even if I use all these th the best monsters I have right now. Like I, if I optimize this team, this will still lose to 80% of most players that are actively fighting in guild battles. Um, I know their levels look 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 like they're raised really high, but I didn't actually upgrade those skills, so they're still pretty shitty. Um, so yeah, there's there's no incentive for me to to actually try hard and and increase the over overall strength of my team, meaning that there's no point. Like there's no there's no I I won't get any stronger, meaning that I don't feel rewarded every time that I raise another unit up. Um, that's one of the problems. That's that's the number one problem. Number two problem is actually just a mechanic problem in the game. I don't think this is a huge problem, but this is definitely the, something that could they could fix very very easily, and this will probably make a lot of players like a lot more happy. And that's when you're actually doing fortress battles. There's a system where um, only one person going at a time, right? But in order for you to get in, you basically have to just spam click attack. You have to non-stop spam clicking attack because every single person on your guild is probably spam clicking attack as well, trying to fit, trying to squeeze in and do a fight. Um, and that's that's pretty fucked up, you know. That's that's like you have you have like um, you know may, maybe you won't have 30 people because not everyone is online for guild battles, but you'll have like 12 people. They're spamming the attack button, trying to get in and and do fights, and that's that's not a good system. That's that's really really messed up. Like, it would be really nice if they just have some sort sort of queue system. So when you go in, you queue up. Um, you're like you know I'm going to attack, and then whoever's up next for queue gets to queue, and possibly have someone uh like have them be able to cancel queue if they're not um, planning to go in for attack or if they click the attack by accident or um, if there's a change of plans in your strategy or something like that maybe they can cancel the queue so, so, so the next person can go in or something like that um, 
Yeah, I think these are. This is actually something very, very minor. It's it's definitely something that's um, that's fixable in the in the near future. But I think overall the the guild battle system, like how they how they intended it, was was definitely really, really, really nice. It's like a it's like a big giant board game that you have to play with a lot of players, and there's a lot of coordination and strategy involved in actually trying to trying to reach number one in the end. Um, yeah, there's that's that's the num that's the first thing with with the guild battles. The second thing with the guild battles is um, is I think the the rewards like the the rewards of actually being number one isn't that really significant, or the rewards of the fortresses and crafting and stuff is not actually really significant. Um, there's no there's no there's no sense of uh, progression. I think they the 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 way that they made it was like what was the way that they made um, earning gear is actually really really imbalanced. Most of the the top gear, the the absolute best gear in the game possible, is like uh, for Lara. I'll, I'll use Lara for example because Lara is my the main using is the Owen set. The the set that is called Owen, like Owen something, Owen's necklace, Owen's um, Owen's whatever, Owen's blessing. You know, the the Owen set is the absolute best set for Lara in the game, and this is only obtained by by crafting by working through. Um, you know your fortress battles and getting gear and stuff, and it's gonna take me probably it's probably gonna take months for me to actually make one piece, you know. So it's a uh, it's a lot of work, but it's also pretty messed up that um, I can get something that is relatively um, almost as strong in the arena after playing for a few days. You know, I can earn. I can earn enough um, resources through through the guild battles, like the guild points and arenas, um, in just a few days for me to to have something similar. You know, if you look at this um, Serenus boot, um, it's if you look at the other sets, probably like the one for for Ashley is probably slightly stronger, but it's still it's still relatively the same. Like you can get something that is almost as strong within just a few days. So there's a real imbalance there of um, getting gear. And also the power-up system is really really scary. Like having your your gear like just evaporate when you when you um, when you power them up is just it's just it's it's soul crushing basically. It just like if I had any of my these pieces evaporate I'd just you know I'd probably delete the game or some shit like that. Um, you know it's 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 so punishing it's it's insane and but but the thing is you 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 go you go through guild battles you work so hard and um, for months in order to get the res resources to to do your crafting but you know if this if I actually someday get this bow and it evaporates after I get it I would probably GG rage quit you know it's just it would be way too crushing and and I think in my opinion for for that to happen, um, but I think that isn't exactly like that huge of a problem. It's a, uh, a lot of Korean games are like that. You know, you can just have shit explode at random and you lose it forever. Um, I think that's that's also something. I think some players enjoy that, but I think for m majority of um, of casual gamers like people in Europe or NA, that if you're planning to release this. In the future, for for Europe and NA, um, they're they're not going to be happy with that. They're definitely not going to be happy with that. There's a lot less really hardcore players like this. That type of system only works in Korean games, like only in Korea servers, um, where, where that shit will work. Anywhere else, it would be too intense. Um, just 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 a heads up. Just just take a look at like some examples in the past, like some MMOs, like like Aeon, for example, like that. Um, they like um, Aeon was a huge success in Korea, but the, it was it flopped so so badly when the, when they um, when they eventually got an NA release because of how punishing the game was, and most NA players can't can't take that sort of shit like can't take that sort of abuse. Um, so like this, I, and and then you look at another game like you know Blade and Soul. Um, and Blade Soul, I think, did relatively well in NA. It was it was okay. It's not like the best game possible, but it, it was still it was still pretty good. And um, 
they they dumb down the system basically like i I've, I've played on the chinese server before and then i i went to play on the na server afterwards and they made the system a lot easier on na like used to have to do a lot more shit like it was like three or four times as hard when i played on the china server and on the na server it was like so much easier so i think for, for the majority of um just casual players they can't take that type of shit uh, but for me i think it's it's okay like I, I do like things pretty punishing, but I'm I'm representing the voice of the mass. I'm not representing the voice of myself here, so I can't really really uh, justify my opinion. So yeah, I think there's another there's another fix with the system as well. Like um, with the guild battle system, I think either they could make it uh, they could fix the system all together by making it so that the defense party actually has a chance to win against the offensive party or um, maybe maybe have it have the ranking system be based on something else besides besides the actual defense and offense system because it just it just there's no point like there, I could use some weird random I just put a single monster defense and all that matters is the last five minutes of guild battles we'll see which guild has more active players on spamming spamming our tickets and at the very very last second we see who has more more conquered areas and that's that's basically it and that determines your your ranking in the guild so and there's no like the fortress battle has almost no meaning because um, I mean, obviously, you, you do get some resources if you win the the fortress battles against other people, but you know these these are pretty negligible. Like they're they're pretty shit, <laughs> to be honest. Um, so so there's no there's no sense of achievement. Like I could raise a whole team of monsters. I can have like 30 pretty decent, pretty strong monsters, and it would make no difference. It would literally make zero difference than if I didn't raise those monsters at all. So. I think a lot of players are finding that they there's no there's no progression for them. They're not getting any stronger. They're not getting any better at this game, um, and they eventually quit. So I think that's the that's one of the um, one of the other main issues with the game. So yeah, I don't I don't know how you can fix the grindiness of the game. I think being having things be grindy is is a is okay. I think if you just look at other games that are really like successful, like, like um, you know, I think I always go back and talk about Summoner's War because I think Summoner's War is definitely one of the most successful Korean mobile games that, that have ever come out, um, and it, it's been on for it's been going on for so so long and still going. There's still more players playing the game, and I think Lineage has the potential to to do that. But there's, um, there's, they're probably gonna have to make a few changes and a few fixes. That um, if they, if they, the systems might have worked um, if this was in, if this was only for a Korean release. But it's definitely not gonna work for a global release because most of the players aren't that hardcore. They can't, they can't handle that type of abuse. All right, they cannot. Like Koreans can, 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 can live through that shit. But most players would, if they, if they are subject to that type of abuse, they would probably quit the game um, and uh, you know I, I think that, that was just that was just basically my my uh, my opinions I think of, of someone who, who has been playing since day one who has been active and also someone that really really cares about the the longevity of lineage red knights and yeah that's pretty much it so hopefully this this reached out to 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 the people that are um, in charge of the development. I don't know if the the people that are, um, if maybe NCSoft would have the resources to make a separate development team for a global server if they de decide to release in the future. Because I think that's definitely going to be needed for the future if they decide to make like an NA or EU release because they they need to definitely make a few changes to the system and probably tone down a few things because most players that aren't Korean cannot take that type of shit, all right? Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Um, hopefully, hopefully this... Someone watch this video. Hopefully someone watch this video. Yeah, I'm gonna continue playing the game. I, I still really, really enjoy it, and I'm really looking forward to all the upcoming systems in, in the game, but I think before they release more things, 
it might be a better idea to um, to fix just the basics of the game. Like the basics being being the the progression system of the players. I think progression is the number one system for for any any game, and players need to feel like they're 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 moving on, you know, they're 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 going somewhere in the game in order for for them to feel rewarded, in order for them to stick by the game and keep playing. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. And um, you know, if you're a viewer of mine, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.